Auditions. Let's talk. You want to get hired as an actor. You've got an audition coming up. And let's say, for example, you've got the sides. You know what you're reading. Now what do you do? You've read it. And right away a character comes to mind. Forget it. That's not the character. That's what everybody else is going to do. The most important thing at an audition is to be remembered. If you're at the audition, chances are they believe you already have the skill. So what are they looking for? They're looking for the character. And what are they going to see? They're going to see a sea of people playing the same character in the same clothes. You don't want to do that. And we'll get into that in a second. So what do you want to do? You want to show up wearing something that the character might wear at another time in their life. Now, by that I mean, I would rather go into um, an audition where, say, I'm up for the role of a lawyer in jeans and a sweatshirt than a suit because everybody's going to wear a suit and tie. Everybody's going to look like a stereotypical lawyer. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to dress differently. And I'm going to have done my homework and come in as a fully filled out character with my body type, my center, my psychological gesture, all that work has been done. And from the minute I hit that building where the auditions are, I'm walking and talking as that character. And that doesn't stop until I leave. Another thing I want to remember is don't get into conversations at an audition. That's just a mistake. I used to see that all the time. A bunch of chatty Cathy's and Ken's rabbling away about this audition they had and that thing they've got coming up and they're all excited and they're just burning off all this energy talking about their personal lives among themselves. Me, I always sit separate from all that and focus on the work because I'm going to get the job and they're not. And that's my attitude when I go into an audition. Now when you walk through that door, they're hoping to see the character that they've imagined that they're looking for for this role. You come in fully embodied in that character, looking different than everybody else. You've already got their attention. Now, it doesn't matter if you say the words exactly as they're written and get every line correct. It's really not important. It's how you say the lines. Lines can be worked on. If you don't say it in character, then you're just not the right person for the role. Now, despite all of that, you may not get cast. Chances are you won't. Why? You're too tall. You're too short. You're too big. You're too little. Your eyes are too blue, your eyes are too brown, your eyes aren't brown enough. There's a million reasons why. My ex-business partner was a producer, produced a lot of great TV commercials. He told me a story once about how they went through actor after actor, audition after audition, looking for somebody for this one particular role. You had the product person there, you had the writer there, the producers, the director, the casting director, and they just couldn't agree on anybody after all these auditions. And finally they held another audition and there he was. There was the character that was right for this. Everybody agreed on this guy they were looking at. Everybody said, yeah, that, that's our guy. Except for the product rep. The product rep looked over and said, that guy reminds me of my brother-in-law. I, I just can't see him in my commercial. So the actor went in and did a great job. He was remembered. He was exactly right for the role, but he didn't get it. Because the producer just couldn't look at somebody that looked like his brother-in-law. So there's a lot of reasons why you won't get cast. But I can promise you that that actor was cast by that casting director in some future projects. And possibly by the director. Now, I went to an audition for the film Lady Hawk. And I knew I wasn't right for the, uh, for the role they were casting at the time. And it was an open call at Warner Brothers. 600 people showed up at Warner Brothers and the line went around the block on a hot day out in the valley in Los Angeles. Now out of that 600 people, six got called back. That was according to Lauren Lloyd, who was the casting director. And she called me in and she told me this, that there were 600 people showed up for that audition and they called back six. I was one of the six and there was no role in this film for me. She made that clear right up front. But she wanted me to read for her because she felt that I was interesting and uh, good character actors are hard to come by sometimes. So I read for her and then I didn't hear anything for a year. A year later I got a call that they wanted to see me for a role in the film Protocol with Goldie Hawn. 
and I went to that audition and I was cast. So just because you're not cast on the thing you're auditioning for, don't go walking out of there beating yourself up about, oh, I didn't do this right, I didn't get that right, I, it must, no. None of that stuff matters. I had actor friends that would wonder how I got as much work as I did, landing one out of three jobs, getting two callbacks for every three auditions. It's because I didn't put any emotional weight behind whether or not I got the job. A couple times that I didn't get the job is because I really wanted it. And uh, I felt the role was perfect for me. And I focused on that instead of on my work. And that's when I was younger. So you've got to go in realizing that it's not personal, it's business. It's a business meeting. So when you go in, be about the character, be different, be remembered. Don't spend time in the waiting room chatting with anybody. So... Once you've got your technique down and you can create a fully embodied character, take that character to the audition and let them go. Have fun with it. If you like the video, do me a favor and click the like button and subscribe. It helps me to put out more videos. And I'm going to start populating my Patreon pages with exclusive videos just for Patreon, in-depth exercises for all of the different areas of checkoff technique. So check me out on Patreon and I'll see you in the next video.